You know, I first met Lenny Dawson 35 years ago when I was the baseball coach, the assistant football coach at Purdue University. Lenny was a senior at Alliance High School, just 20 miles from this Hall of Fame. He was an All State quarterback, an All State basketball player, baseball player, and an excellent student. Lenny was shy and he was quiet but had an air of confidence and poise that was very, very contagious. My first game starting a football game in high school was at that stadium where they held the Hall of Fame game. I was the first player born and raised in Stark County to go into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. My family sitting out in the audience, uh, some place that I was very familiar with, I was one of 11 children. I was the ninth child. There were seven boys and four girls. I was the seventh son. And I happened to be the seventh son of a seventh son. Now, Alliance, Ohio, was, at that time, was around 25 to 30,000 people. Sports were very big in those days. I had a brother, so really, that's how it got me started in sports, because the little guy around me was always tagging along after the big brothers and, you know, wanting to do what they do. An exceptional high school athlete, Dawson found that he had options after graduating. The great Woody Hayes recruited him, but lost out to a lesser-known coach whose Louisiana roots got to the young man from Alliance, Ohio first. I was recruited by a school by the name of Purdue University. There was a guy there by the name of Henry Hank Strand. He was a former player there. He was an assistant coach. The chemistry Dawson had established with the Boilermaker assistant coach, Hank Strand, spawned a friendship. That friendship would last for more than a half century, but would not be rekindled until five years later. Dawson found himself languishing on NFL benches. Len Dawson was chosen fifth overall in the 1957 NFL draft by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Playing behind such great signal colors as Earl Morrill and Jack Kent, Dawson became frustrated and eventually was traded to the Cleveland Browns where he found the situation to be the same. His inability to get playing time was disheartening until an old friend re-entered the scene. And after five years, I hadn't done anything in professional football. I hadn't had the opportunity, really. It was interesting because they had a coach's invention in Pittsburgh where I was living at the time. And Hank Strand came to town. He was then the new head football coach for the Dallas Texans of this American football league. I had breakfast with him, and uh, he was asking about how things were going for me, and I wasn't very happy because I hadn't had a chance to play. And he said, if you ever get a chance to get free, give me a call. I'd love to have you. Well, I got to thinking, listen, I'm not going anywhere for the National Football League and the Cleveland Browns. So I asked Paul Brennan for my release. And lo and behold, he put me on waivers. Now he put me on waivers in June. Now back in those days, in June, the uh, the coaches took the month off, so most of them didn't even know that I was placed on waivers because some of them told me that later on. So we got you on there. I really picked you up, tried you out. So I became free. And so that's when I went with the Dallas Texans and, and Hank Stray, and that's when I really got my chance. To
although not completely sold on Dawson's talents, Chiefs owner Lamar Hunt allowed Coach Angstrand to work with Lynn and cultivate his skills to fit the Texan style. Strand's intuitions were correct, and their gunslinging quarterback would lead the fledgling squad to an 11 and 3 record, the top ranked offense, and forcing many, including Lamar Hunt, to change their views on Dawson's ability. Lamar Hunt did something that he never did before or after. He traded Cotton Davidson, the starting quarterback from the year before, to the Oakland Raiders. The reason he did that is that Oakland was a team that had a lot of problems and they needed some help. And so he was just trying to help the league become successful. And so that was the start of the rest of the year. Ended up winning the championship. So the first year was an outstanding one for me, and I was even voted the most valuable player in the league in that particular year. So my first year with Hank Strat and my first year with his two American football league was great. After his MVP season in Dallas, the Texans relocated to Kansas City, and Dawson would help lead the newly founded Chiefs to not only their first Super Bowl, but the best record in AFL history. After battling injuries the entire 1969 season, Dawson and his fellow Chiefs teammates fought their way back to the Super Bowl. How did we get to that Super Bowl four game? Well, I'll tell you what, as a wild card, because uh, the Raiders won the division, so we were a wild card. We had to go to New York to take on the New York Jets. They had won the Super Bowl the year before, Super Bowl III, with Joe Namath and an outstanding football team in New York, and we beat them there. Now we had to go to Oakland, California, a team that had beaten us twice during the regular season, to play them, and we beat them on their turf. To more the right to go to the Super Bowl IV in New Orleans against the Minnesota Vikings. Much like his football career, Lance's avocation of being a broadcaster started auspiciously from the days when he hustled from practice to make the 6 p.m. sportscast to his days now as a seasoned professional and color commentator for his beloved team, Len has proven he still believes Chiefs Ray. I just finished, that, I believe, my 27th year of broadcasting Kansas City Chiefs games on their radio network. It keeps me very close to what is happening in a sport that I really love. I've seen a lot of great football, a lot of great football players over the years. I don't know, I don't consider it work. I don't think I should say that too loud because it asked me to do it for nothing. But uh, it's been a real privilege, a real privilege for me to be associated with the Kansas City Chiefs and they have treated me like a people of Kansas City are tremendous. They have been tremendous to me and my family and to the Kansas City Chiefs. I am very proud, very proud to be here. Thank you very much. You can see a young man like this carry on the tradition of what you guys started. I don't know if you listen to what he's saying and how he's saying things that uh, he believes in and he loves it. I mean, Mr. Dawson, is, he's the backbone of this organization. Uh, he brought uh, this organization a Super Bowl. And so for me to kind of try to carry on that tradition and uh, hopefully bring another Super Bowl back to the Chiefs Kingdom uh, is something that I'm more striving to do. We're going to hold you to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. January day in New Orleans, the AFL champion Kansas City Chiefs were 
dogs in their Super Bowl IV meeting with the NFL champs, the Minnesota Vikings. It was the conclusion to the 1969 football season, and the Chiefs completed it that day with a dominating 23-7 victory, led by the game's most valuable player, Lynn Dawson. Once again, this time as a broadcaster. 
wounds and storybook life was not easily written. He battled adversity both personally and professionally. But despite the difficulties, he would achieve nearly every accolade possible in his two industries. And through it all, he remained rooted in his adopted home in Kansas City. The welcome he received coming from the Alps was amazing. These people in Kansas City love, love their team, love their players, and I, I've been, I've been around the whole country, um, you know, being from Pittsburgh and Michigan, um, people from Ohio. They love football, man. but not like these teams over here. You know, coming up here from Dallas, they were a winner. They came to Kansas City ready to prove something. You know, in those days, it wasn't about money. It was about love of the game. It's about uh, He was, first of all, a really hard worker and um, very kind and personable. And I didn't appreciate it at the time, but when Lenny and I were growing up, he had a um, job working with the Chiefs and they would work out every day. And then um, after he got done working out, he'd shower and change and rushed down downtown to Channel 9 where he did the sports and then he would come home and um, have dinner with my mom and brother and I and after dinner we'd go downstairs and play ping pong or pool then he'd go back for the 10 o'clock show do that and come home and start it all over again. I think he did that because that was probably the only time he'd get to spend time with us. We had to run out of stuff. Yeah, it's with my father was something else. Uh, everywhere we went, people hate me. It's fired up. I mean, they went to hides. People would line up at dinner. And my dad was so gracious. I mean, he never turned any other day. We didn't really get uh, a lot of family trips during the summer, but hey, I got to go to trade camp. <laughs> I got to hang out with the team. Standing up on, on the training table with them after Super Bowl IV. It was amazing. That's all we asked for all along. We had the opportunity to play in the championship game in our league and also to play in the Super Bowl game. And then hope we could put things together in the Super Bowl game. I thought we were going to go there. He was kind of quiet and reserved, but he was always listening. And on the field, he was laser focused and wanting to get the job done. But he did have a look that you could tell you were in trouble when he <laughs> He kind of would be the, that steely eyed stare, and I heard a lot of the players say that they know that look too. So, I mean, his resume speaks for itself. I don't think anybody can talk about that. He has been able to touch so many people's lives, and just the outpouring this last week since he passed away is just overwhelming. And I think that he would be so proud and so touched and would not have expected it. He was just a special guy. And everybody would look at him. I'm so proud of him. And I know so many other people are. Um, it's just amazing how poor of love that we've got. It's a special moment here. They are going to do a little. It was famously used by the late, great Len Dawson. Everybody that, uh, that took their time out of their day to, to come down here early and to uh, pay tribute to my dad. Thank you so much. It really means the world to our family.